Hello and welcome back. In today's video, let's see how we can replace the canvas of this sneaker in Affinity Photo. So this will be our end result. Let's kick off by making a mask of the canvas. We can try to use the selection brush tool, but as you notice, this is not working very well. There is very little contrast with what we want to include and what we want to exclude. I can make the brush smaller to try to select exactly what I need, but this is going to take some time. In this case, I think it would be better to use the pen tool to create a curve which we can use as a mask later. What I like to do is to first draw straight lines with the pen tool, and then using the node tool to curve them. As a final step, I will fill the curve with a color and lower the opacity to see through and really fine tune it. As this is a curve, I don't have to worry too much about it right now, as I can always adjust it very easily. Now that we have created our mask curve, let me enable the new canvas. I will put it below our mask curve and adjust its size. Time to apply the curve as a mask. This can be easily done by moving the curve on top of the layer we are going to use as the new canvas. Perfect. The curve had some transparency, which I need to remove so we get a non-transparent mask. Looks pretty amazing already. But this is very flat and of course looks a bit unrealistic. So what can we do to make it really blend in? Let's start by adding some highlights and shadows to it. I will do this by adding two level adjustments. The first one I'm going to use for shadows. So I will darken the image. I'll make a copy of it and use a gradient tool to gradually make the lower bottom part darker. On the second level adjustment, I will apply a gradient from the upper left side as the mask and change the level properties so it will brighten things up. These two level adjustments already give more depth to the canvas. To make it even more realistic, we are going to distort the canvas so it feels like it's part of the shoe. We can use a displace filter, but to make things easy, I will use a warp filter. After I apply the filter, I will close this dialog and go back. This is because of my settings. Based on my settings, a filter is always added as a child of the selected layer. And because of this, the live filter is a child of the levels adjustment, because this was the selected layer. I will move it out and put it on top of the levels adjustment so it will apply to the canvas layer. Using the push brush in the live filter, I will adjust the canvas so it feels like it's wrapped and basically you just have to curve the canvas to fit with the outline of the shoe to get that effect. Let's have a look at the effect of the warp filter. It's always a good idea to take a short break and have a fresh look at it. So you can see the inconsistencies. Let me fine tune the warp a little bit. Cool, not bad at all. I still feel like the canvas is a bit too bright. So let me add another levels adjustment to darken it up a little bit further. To 
To make the shoe a bit more interesting, I'm going to add a line at the bottom part of the shoe using the pen tool. Just like when creating a mask, I prefer to draw straight lines first, before adjusting it with the note tool. I will also change the end point of the lines to be square from the context toolbar. Perfect! The white area where the lines is on top has different heights, so we cannot have the same white of line all over. By going to the stroke properties and using the pressure, I can make parts of the line thinner, making sure it fits with the background. The final step in the line is to mask out the end point so it blends with the shoe. That is pretty amazing. But we are not done yet. Let's add some structure in the new canvas. I'm going to duplicate the original shoe and apply the curve mask by copying it from the other layer. So we get an image like this, the area we replaced. In order to get the structure of this layer into the new canvas, I will change its blend mode to overlay. You see, by using the original image and applying an overlay blend mode, we get the original structure back. Now, this has also brightened things up. Another levels adjustment to the rescue. Maybe I should have called this video, my level friends. Hmm. So, let me change the background color to a more darker fitting color. To make the shoe a bit more interesting, I will make the circle tag more prominent. Let's do that by adding a circle, which goes on top of the existing circle. After resizing and repositioning it, I can give it a nice matching color. Now, what this circle tag needs is the structure from the original shoe. For this, I will apply the same technique by copying the original shoe and using a copy of the circle as a mask. We can then use the overlay or the soft line blend mode to get the structure from it. Another great tip here is to use blend ranges and lower the highlights from the source, so we only get the darks applied to the circle below. But I'm not really happy with the color, so let me fiddle with the color until I'm happy. Just as I was getting happy, I see my mask has some issues. Well, you know me by now, I like to be happy, but we have to work hard to be happy. That is exactly what I'm doing right now to fix this mask. We also have to be careful not to be too happy all the time. Sometimes we need to be unhappy so we get happy again. That is the everlasting loop of life, I guess. Well, in the meantime, I have added another levels adjustment to darken things. However, I inverted its mask by using Command I. I will use a soft white brush to paint more shadows just to make it organic. Today, levels are really my best friends. Here is another tip with levels. I can use a levels adjustment to really brighten things up so the shoe gets a light canvas look.
but I'm going to darken it. Sorry guys. Perfect. To finish up, maybe a reverse wig net to bring more attention to the shoe. A reverse wig net? What the heck is that? I call it that way. No idea what it is called officially. Instead of darkening the outer parts of an image, the reverse vignette brightens the center of an image. And I think this works very well in this example case with the dark background. That's it for today's video. I hope you liked it. And if you did, don't forget to hit that like button. Thank you so much for watching.